Give them a round of applause. Please, you may be seated in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. Amen. We just entered into a new month. Hallelujah. The month of October, the first Sunday of this month. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I am still here. Hallelujah. Amen. If it had not been for his grace, it had not been for his mercies, if it had not been for him watching over us, I don't know where you and I we would have been. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I, I'm on assignment, and I want you to tighten your seatbelt as we take off. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to teach on a subject I have entitled, The Devil is After Your Testimony and Oil. The Devil is After Your Testimony and Oil. Say that with me. Oh, say it like you mean it. The Devil is After Your Testimony and Oil. You are a bad student. Very bad, terrible student. Hallelujah. You don't follow instructions. I'm going to give you another opportunity to do it right. Hallelujah. I want you to say after me, the devil is after my testimony and oil. Better, 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 better. One of the things I have come to realize in my walk with God and by experiential knowledge, I have come to realize that the devil don't attack us just because he wants to attack us. The devil never opposes us just because he wants to oppose us. The devil never resists us just because he wants to resist us. Anytime the devil attacks, he attacks on purpose. And he attacks to achieve a particular goal. And one of the things I have come to realize is that oftentimes, when we see ourselves under enormous warfare and battles and onslaught from the kingdom of darkness against our life and against our destiny, I have come to realize that the devil is after your testimony and the devil is after the oil that is upon your head. That is why we must be battle ready. That is why we can relate. That is why we must be resilient. We must be resolute in our belief. We must be resolute in prayer. We must be resolute in the word. That is why we must have unshakable faith. That is why we must have indomitable faith. We must be unmovable, unshakable. We must always be battle ready. Because the devil, the kingdom of darkness, is always battle ready. Trying to interfere. Trying to interrupt. Trying to intercept. Trying to overturn. Trying to cause a delay. Trying to cause disappointment. And you see... If you allow the enemy to do it, he will do it. He will not cease until he has destroyed everything in your life. That is why you must always be battle ready. You must be confrontational. You cannot conquer what you cannot confront. You only conquer that which you confront. The enemy 
is after your testimony. Somebody say, the enemy is after my testimony. Or say it like you mean it. The enemy is after my testimony. I want you to understand that the reason why the enemy is after your testimony because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, the verse number 11, and they overcame him. Who is the him? The devil. Who is the him? The kingdom of darkness. Who is the him? Satan and his cohorts. Satan and the hearts of demons. The Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. By the word of their testimony. Which means that our testimony gives us the supernatural empowerment, gives us the supernatural ability, gives us the supernatural capability to triumph and to prevail against all the works and the activities of the kingdom of darkness. So if the enemy is able to stop your testimony, if the enemy is able to intercept your testimony, if the enemy is able to block your testimony, it means that you cannot prevail against him. The devil doesn't want you to have that testimony. Because you see, your testimony reveals how present God is in your life. Your testimony reveals what God is doing in your life. Your testimony causes you to build an intimacy with God. Your testimony brings you to the altar of the Lord, to the throne room of God. Your testimony causes you to worship God and to praise him in another level. So if the devil can get your testimony, he has gotten you. How? If the devil gets your testimony, he has gotten your worship. If the devil gets hold of your testimony, he has gotten hold of your praise. If the enemy is able to interrupt and intercept your testimony, beloved, he is preventing you from prevailing against him. That is why this morning, whatever force or power or entity that has purpose and determined to attack your testimony, for your testimony not to actualize, materialize, for your testimony not to come into being and come into fruition, this morning you must confront it. With everything that is within you. Because listen, this month you must testify. You must testify of the goodness of God. You must testify of the greatness of God in your life. You must testify of the favor of God. You must testify of the breakthroughs. You must testify of the manifestation of the prophecies that God has given to you. You must testify. And in order for you to testify, you must confront the enemy to conquer the enemy and to put him in his place and for you to tell him, my testimony is a no-go area. You cannot touch it. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Your testimony reveals your identity. Your testimony reveals your connectivity to the almighty God. Your testimony underpins the fact that you are not ordinary. Your testimony reveals that you are a covenant son and you are a covenant daughter to the Lord. So if the enemy is able to attack your testimony, interrupt your testimony, intercept your testimony, or delay your testimony, the devil is messing with your identity. 
the Bible says that the the spirit of Christ the spirit of Christ the testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy the testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy do you remember when Goliath came up against the children of the Israelites for 40 days, intimidating them and terrorizing them. Everybody went into hiding, including the king and the tallest man in the whole nation, King Saul. Everybody went into hiding. Everybody was afraid of Goliath. But the Bible says that a young boy showed up by the name of David. And David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defiles the armies of Israel? I will come against him. I will, I will fight him. I will, I will finish him. I will kill him. I will end him. King Saul asked him, how will you do that? How are you going to kill the champion of the Philistines? How are you going to kill Goliath who is an experienced warrior from the days of his youth? You have never been in any battle. You have never fought any giant. How are you going to prevail against him? How are you going to withstand him? And how are you going to fight him? And this was his response. The testimony. The other day, I was taking care of the few sheep of the family. A bear came up against the, the, the sheep. I killed the bear. A lion came up against the sheep. I killed the lion. The same God that empowered me. The same God that gave me the ability to kill the bear and the lion. That same God will make me kill Goliath. And check the scriptures. He beheaded Goliath. He didn't behead Goliath because he was skillful. He didn't behead Goliath because he was smart. He didn't behead Goliath because he was a warrior. He didn't behead Goliath because he, he, was, he had a lot of ammunition. He killed Goliath because of the testimony. That is why it's imperative that whatever you are going through, don't forget the testimonies of yesterday's. Always remember the testimony of yesterday. We soon forget the testimonies of yesterday. And I want you to understand it is an attack of the enemy. Because you see, if you can talk about the testimonies of yesterday, if you can speak about the testimonies of yesterday's, you will have the assurance that that which God has said and spoken concerning your life, and that which you have asked for and prayed for, if he did it before, he will do it again. David prevailed against Goliath because of testimonies. The enemy know that when you have your testimony, you will overcome. The enemy know if you have your testimony, you are a winner. The enemy know if you have your testimony, you are a champ. The enemy knows if you have your testimony, there is no attack from the heavens or from the earth or from beneath the waters of the earth that can stop you. That is why the enemy is after your testimony. 
The enemy is after the testimony of your relationship. The testimony of your marriage. The testimony of your finances. The testimony of your career. The testimony of your ministry. The testimony of your business. The testimony of your family. The testimony of your children. The enemy is after the testimony of your deliverance. The enemy is after the testimony of your health. That is why the attacks have become so enormous and relentless. And you are receiving barrages of attacks from every angle. Some of you are overwhelmed. Some of you are exhausted. Some of you don't know what else to do because you are battle weary. The reason why the warfare and the battle has become so intense is because of the testimony. The devil don't want you to have it. I want you to quickly turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 8, the verse number 16. And then I will jump to the verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8, the verse number 16, and I will jump to the 20. <laughs> if you are there, you say amen. He said, bite up the testimony. Bite up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Bind up the testimony. What does it mean? Preserve the testimony. God was telling us, preserve the testimonies. Preserve my wondrous things that I have done in your life and that of the nation. Preserve it. Seal it. Protect it. Bind up the testimonies. That is how valuable it is. That is how precious it is. That is how powerful, formidable it is. That is why God said, bind it up. Protect it. Seal it. Why seal it? So that the enemy will not take it. The enemy will not steal it. The enemy will not disrupt it. Your testimony is a weapon. Your testimony is powerful. Your testimony reveals God in your life. That is why the enemy is after your testimony. Take me to the verse 20. He said, to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Talking about the testimony. Basically, what he's saying is this. If they don't testify, it means that there is no light in them. What does it mean? When the Bible says there is no light in them, they have not contacted revelation. Light means illumination. Light means revelation. Light means divine encounters. Light means supernatural encounters. Light means personal encounters. God says, speak the testimony. Speak it. Declare it. Decree it. Don't hold your peace. Don't be quiet. Because as you speak it, you are silencing the voice of your accusers. As you speak it, you are silencing the voice of your enemies as you speak. Listen to me. The Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The seed of David. And the Bible says he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Which means that you and I, we are a friend to a lion. And when you look at the characteristics of a lion... No other animal in the jungle can befriend lion. Which means that if we are a friend to a lion, we are lions. 
we are lions. And if we are lions, let's rouse the testimonies of God in our lives. If we are lions, let's rouse the testimonies of God. And let me tell you, when a lion row, dogs stop barking. Where are the lions to row? The dogs are still barking at you and your destiny and your family and your life because you are not roaring as a lion. The bigger the testimony, the bigger the opposition. The, the bigger the breakthrough, the greater the warfare. Paul said, an effectual door has been opened for me, but many adversaries. Until you confront the enemy of your testimony, whether they be spirit or men, until you confront them and oppose them, you will not arrive at your possession. If you live life defensively, you will amount to nothing. In, in order for you to advance forward, to propel forward, to move forward, to rise in heights, and to go down in depths, for you to come out from every valley to the mountain top, you must live life offensively. offensively. You must be aggressive. You must be wild like an ox. You must be tenacious. You must be assiduous. You must be diligent. You must have light, illumination from God's word. I told the enemy the other day, you are messing with the wrong guy because you know I am more crazy than you. If they are rating craziness, I am number one before you come. So you are messing with the wrong person. The other day, a madman saw another madman and the madman said to himself, I am mad. But this madman is more mad than me. That is how you must confront life. You don't live life folding your arms. The devil is not gentle and so you don't deal with him gently. The devil doesn't sleep. The devil is attacking us 24-7. The devil is not moved by your personality. The devil is not moved by your eloquence and diction and vocabulary and your ability to effectively speak English and grammar. It's not moved by that. The devil is not moved by your possessions. The devil is not moved by your persona. You must come to the place where you live so offensively that even your appearance intimidates the devil. Just your appearance. It intimidates the devil. Many, many, many years ago, I was just, I think I was about 12 or 13. 
myself and my younger brother, we were walking on the pedestrian crossing. And we're just chit-chatting. In Accra, Ghana. Young boy, like about six, seven, was walking with the man. Coming from the other side, who were coming from here, going there. And they were coming from there, coming here. And as we walk towards them, the boy just ran onto the highway. And cars were. The woman was screaming. Everybody was shocked. People ran to the street to get the boy. He was still running. And pointing his finger at our direction. Doing this. Will not come. I was confused. My brother was confused. So, uh, but what did we do? We don't know you. We were coming from this direction. You were coming from this direction. We didn't even get close to you. Why are you pointing at us? The little boy said, this man, there is fire all around him and I'm afraid. And they said, why are you afraid? He said, fire. He said, who are you? He said, I'm a giant in the spirit. In the witchcraft kingdom. But I'm afraid of this man. I don't know him. We have never met before. We were just crossing the road. Through the pedestrian crossing. But my appearance. Caused the devil to vamoose. You must come to a place. Where you know your influence and authority. You must come to the place where you have light and illumination that your appearance causes demons and the forces of darkness to flee before you open your mouth to say a word. The devil is after your testimony. And until you dispossess him, you can possess your testimony. And in order for you to dispossess the enemy, you must confront him head on, shoulder to shoulder, eyeball to eyeball. You don't live life expecting that one day God will remember you. You don't live life expecting that one day what God has said will happen. No, it won't happen unless you make it happen. <laughs> for every move, there is a mover. And for every shake, there is a shaker. There is always a face behind the scenes. Some of you, you must come to the place where you come to a conclusion without reservation. The poverty and what I suffered, my children will never suffer it. Your children shouldn't see poverty all their life. Your children shouldn't fight the battles that you have fought. But in order for that to happen, you must take a stand. You must take a stand against the forces of darkness in your household that doesn't want you to rise up. The powers of darkness in the regions of the sea and in the heavens that doesn't want you to come into your testimony. You must look at them directly and speak against them and put them in their place. If your testimony it's going to stand and it is going to manifest. We chicken out too soon. We quit too 
curso 1. When you look at my personality, you will know that losing is no good for me. No. I don't lose. <laughs> I have never lost before. Because if you kick me down, I will keep on rising. I told you about the story of the dog and the lion. You remember? Oh, you don't remember. A dog wanted to fight a lion. The lion beat the dog to stupor and left him. But any time the dog sees the lion, the fight is on. They will beat him and leave him for dead. But any the dog see the lion the fight is on until the lion got tired and exhausted and weary of the battle to the state that any time he sees the dog he takes off <laughs> the righteous shall fall seven times but seven times he will rise again Rejoice not over me, my enemies. For when I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. How are they that say that there is no hope for me in God? Psalm 3, 1 to 3. Many are they that have said to my soul, there is no hope. There is no future for me in God. This is what my enemies are saying, Sarah. But thou, oh God, art a shield round about me. My glory and the lifted up of my head. Listen to me. This man, God will lift up your head and nobody can push your head down. It is going to be a glorious month for you. Things are shifting in the spirit. Things are turning around in the spirit because this is your curious time. You have operated in Kronos, which is the calendar time and man made time. But God is moving you from Kronos to Kairos which is the divine and the supernatural and the heavenly time, where everything comes to a standstill. And God says, this is the appointed time to bless our son and to bless our daughter. That is where you are right now. That is why it doesn't matter how the enemy tries so hard to fight your testimony. He can take your testimony from you. Look at somebody and tell the person, the devil cannot take my testimony. I want you to quickly turn your Bibles. Oh, look at somebody and tell the person, the devil cannot take my testimony. Yeah. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 119, the verse number 111. Psalm 119, the verse number 111. There will always be an opposition in order for you to arrive at your possession. There will always be an opposition in order for you to arrive at your possession. That is why you must fight. That is why you must stand. That is why you must speak. That is why you must declare. That is why you must decree. Because there is always opposition before possession. Psalm 119, the verse number 111. He says, your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever. 
your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. Do you understand what that means? It means that when I have a testimony, it gladdens my heart. When I have a testimony, it, it, it makes merry to my heart. When I have a testimony, it takes away every sorrow, every sadness, every disappointment. It takes it away from my life. Because whenever you receive a testimony, you are receiving a bundle of joy. A bundle of laughter. That is why the enemy is after your testimony. That is why the enemy is attacking you from all angles. They attack you in the spirit. They are not prevailing. So now they are attacking you in the flesh. When they attack your finances and they are not prevailing, they attack your health. When they attack your health, and they are not prevailing, they attack your job. And especially if you are a man, and the devil is attacking your job, and the work of your hand, what the enemy is doing is attacking your identity. Because we men, to us, the most precious and valuable thing in our life is not women, it's our work. When God created Adam, he gave him a job. Before Eve came out of his lungs. That is why when you see men gather, they are not talking about their wives and family, they are talking about job. Where to make money, how to make money. That is why if I'm on a flight with Texan and it is my first time meeting Texan and he's sitting beside me and we strike a conversation, this is how it, it will go. My name is Raphael Grant. He will also introduce himself. My name is Emmanuel Kwesi Texan. The next thing you will ask me is this. What do you do for a living? I work with state insurance. And then I will also ask him, what do you do for a living? I'm an accountant. How are you enjoying your accounting job? Is he fetching you a lot of money? We won't talk about family wives children. So, when the enemy attacks your job as a man, he's attacking your identity. Let this, if the enemy attacks your marriage, your relationship is attacking your identity. Because to you, job is not a big deal. Relationship is everything to you. Because when woman was created, the first encounter is relationship. Relationship. That is why when women meet, they won't talk about job. They talk about their marriage, their children, and family. How to make a home. Because that is them. That is their identity. That is what is so valuable and important in their life. And so, if the enemy begins to attack your relationship and attack your marriage, the enemy is attacking your identity as a woman. That is why your eyes must be red. That is why you must row like a lion. That is why you must take a stand. That is why you must confront those things that need to be confronted. You must silence those things that need to be silenced. Listen, I... I am under so much attack dealing with principalities and powers and thrones and dominions and deities and warlocks and wizards and witches. Why? Because I said Georgia is mine. 
And whether you like it or not, you can jump to heaven and come down to the earth. This state, I own it. It is mine. I am telling you, you will hear me say it all the time. A time is coming. When you are two minutes late, you will be at the overflow. People will, people will literally troop in into church. They will say they are going to the habitation of God. This place will be called the porter's house where you receive the word. It will be called the hub of revival. The place where God domicile, God dwells. The place of power. The place where the word is not just preached by the enticing or the persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. The place where impossibilities become possible. The place of supernatural divine encounter. The place where the dead resurrect. The cripple walk and the blind see. The dumb speak and the deaf hear. The place of transformation. This place is called Transformation Factory. I am telling you, United States, this nation has produced great men of God, but they have not seen my kind. Watch out. I am coming. As a result of that, the enemy is attacking on every side. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want me to have my testimony. But I said, you are crazy, but I am more crazy. The enemy is after your testimony. You are not here to while away time. <laughs> you are not here to just occupy space. You are here for impact. The world will not remember you because of what you receive. The world will remember you because of what you gave. Impact. Supernatural shift. Supernatural turn around. You must be so influential and impactful and make a deposit to your generation and the generations yet unborn that after you have finished your assignment and you have checked out of this body and you have stepped out of time into eternity, even after 50 years, 70 years, 100 years of your departure, the next generation should still be talking about you. That's why today, we still talk about Abraham Lincoln. We still talk about Washington. We still talk about Martin Luther King. We still talk about Smith Wilgersworth. We still talk about Jonathan Edwards. We still talk about Catherine Coma. We still talk about Amy Matheson. We still talk about all these great men and these great women that made impact in their generation and the generations yet unborn. That is why don't sit down and fold your arms and allow the enemy to steal your testimony, to disrupt, to interrupt your testimony. Rise above every attack. Rise above the onslaught of the enemy. Listen. You must come to the place where satanic authors doesn't work against you. It doesn't matter how many they raise against you. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Don't allow the devil to take your testimony. I have talked about enough about testimony. Let me move to the oil. Somebody say oil. oil. Somebody say oil. oil. I said to you from the beginning... The devil is after your testimony and the devil is after your oil. The anointing. The anointing. Listen, I don't care who you are, how you are, where you are coming from. The family wherein you were born, if you have Jesus, there is an oil upon your head. <laughs> Psalm 23, the verse number 5. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil. My head with oil. My head. Thou anoint my head with oil. Say that with me. Thou anoint my head with oil. Say it. 
Why didn't the Bible say that thou anoint my feet? Thou anoint my hands. The reason is because if your feet is anointed, it is only your feet. If your hands is anointed, it's only your hands. If your shoulder is anointed, it's only your shoulders. But when your head is anointed, your whole body is anointed. Why? Because the oil that is upon the head of Aaron flows from the head down to the hem of the garment. That is why David said, he anoints my head with oil. Which means that I am soaked. You are soaked, submerged in oil. In oil. Somebody shout, I am anointed. Somebody shout, I am anointed. That is why the devil don't like you. Somebody shout, I'm anointed. That is why the powers of darkness don't sleep. Somebody shout, I'm anointed. That is why they have meeting day and night just because of you. Why? The oil. Somebody shout the oil. The reason why they talk about you day and night, the oil. The reason why they fabricate stuff, they tell stories fictitiously against you, the oil. The oil. Somebody shout the oil. Somebody shout the oil. You are anointed. The reason why they don't like you, it is not because you have done anything to them. The oil. But guess what? When you have the oil, they may not like you, but they cannot do without you. Somebody shout the oil. Somebody shout the oil. The enemy is after the oil that is upon your head. He wants to attack the oil. The anointing that is upon your life. In the Old Testament, it's not everybody that is anointed. When you receive oil upon your head in the Old Testament, it's an indication that you have been chosen. So, anointing and the oil that is upon your head, it is a symbol and it is an indication that you have been chosen. It is also an indication that you are an important person to God. That is what the oil symbolizes. The oil also symbolizes life. Water of life. The oil is water of life. So, the oil... It's a symbol that you have been chosen and you are an important person to God. The oil also symbolizes water of life, which means whatever your assignment is, whatever your mandate, your mission is, because of the oil that is upon your head, you are not permitted to die by the attacks and by the onslaught of the enemy until you finish your assignment. That is why the enemy is after the oil. The enemy doesn't attack people who don't have oil on their head. The enemy don't waste time on people who don't have oil on their head. The enemy doesn't go after people who don't have oil on their head. Tell me how, how many battles you are confronted with. And I will tell you how anointed you are. Tell me how many enemies you have. And I will tell you how anointed you are. Talk to me about the accusation. The inhibitions, the misrepresentations, and I will tell you how anointed you are. Tell me about your sleepless nights, and I will tell you how anointed you are. Tell me about the tears, and I will tell you how anointed you are. Show me the scars, and I will tell you how anointed you are. 
Show me and tell me the storm and the adversities and the high waters. And I will tell you how anointed you are. Because people who are ordinary and they are not important to God and they have not been chosen by God and they don't have oil upon their head never go through any of those things. What you are going through is an indication there is oil over your head. Kai, the city of Hostel don't know what to do with me. They, they don't know what to do with me. They are throwing everything at me. The state of Georgia don't know what to do with me. Many times they have tried to shut down this ministry and this church. Attacks from without and within. And I'm still here. I am still here. On my feet and still standing. Why? I came to the realization because of the oil. The other day I asked myself, I said, why do people matter about my life? Why can't they mind their business and leave this young man alone? What is their problem? What is their issues? Why do they find fulfillment in creating stories, lies, fabrications, smearing my name in the mud and character assassinating me. Why are they doing that? And the spirit of the Lord whispered to me and he said, because of the oil. Because the oil attracts battles. The oil attracts warfare. And when they talk about you, it is because you are important to me. That is why there is nothing like ordinary gossip. But there is a celebrity gossip. When they talk about you, it is because you are a celebrity. That is why they are talking about you. If they talk about you, it's because you matter. It is because you are important. It is because you are precious. It is because you are valuable. And the reason is because of the oil upon your head. That is why the devil is after the oil upon your head. In the Old Testament, everybody is not anointed. It's three categories of people that oil is poured on their head. Not everybody. Three categories of people that receive oil upon their head. The first is the king. So we have what we call the kingly anointing. Before you will become king in Israel, an oil must be poured upon your head. The second people that are anointed is the priest. The king and the priest. And so we have the priestly anointing. The last but not the least, the prophet. So in the Old Testament, the kings, the priests, and the prophets are anointed. So there is a kingly anointing, priestly anointing, and prophetic anointing. It sets you apart. It separates you from the ordinary people. It sets you apart from everybody. Isolates you from the ordinary into the extraordinary. That is in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, when the oil comes upon your head, you receive all the three. When the oil comes upon the head, your head through the power of the Holy Ghost, as you have received, you are operating under the kingly anointing, 
the priestly anointing and the prophetic anointing. That is why the Bible calls us a royal priesthood. A holy nation. We are prophetic people. Prophetic people. We are kings because the Bible says that we will rule and reign with Christ. So we operate in all these three anointing and the devil doesn't like it. That is why the devil is after your oil. And let me show you. If you don't have the oil, the devil even don't know you. If you don't have the oil, the devil don't know your name. The devil doesn't even know that you exist. But immediately the oil comes upon your head. It exposes you. It exposes you. Let me show you a scripture. To underpin and to buttress my point. Turn your Bible to the book of Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 5. The verse number 17 through 20. Second Samuel chapter 5. The verse number 17 through 20. If you are there, you say amen. Second Samuel chapter 5, the verse number 17 through 20. He said, now when the Philistines heard, watch this, pay attention. Now, when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. So watch this. When the oil wasn't on his head, the Philistines were minding their business. But immediately they heard that an oil has come upon his head. The Bible says that they got up looking for him, searching for him. Because of the oil. There are forces assigned against you. To look for you. They are spirits. Assigned against you. To look for you. They are agents of the devil. That have been assigned to look for you. Because of the oil. That is upon your head. They said. All the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard. Of it. David heard of it. And went down to the stronghold. Say that with me. And went down to the stronghold. Or say it like you mean it. And went down to the stronghold. When he heard that the enemies are after him because of the oil, he went down to the stronghold. This afternoon, you must go down to the stronghold. What is the stronghold? Prayer. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that is higher than high. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. It's a citadel. It's a fortress. It's a castle. It's a stronghold. The righteous run into it. And they are safe. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God. Shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Sometimes when the battle is overwhelming. When the attacks are made. When the enemies are many, when the arrows are coming from every angle, come under the shadow of the Almighty. Come to his dwelling place. Enter into the throne room. Lift up your hands in abandonment. Sometimes you can worship. Sometimes you can praise. Sometimes you can pray. Sometimes 
sometimes you can go on your knees and lift up your hands and talk to the Father and say, God, has it not been said and is it not written? If you be for us, who can be against us? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord God delivered him from them all. You are my shield and my burglar. You are the weapons of my warfare. Others trust in chariots. Others also trust in horses. But as for us, we trust in the name of the Lord. David said to Goliath and the Philistines, you come to me with spears and with sword and with shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Jehovah. The ancient of days, the rose of sorrow, the lily of the valley, the creator that wasn't created, the God of all flesh. The God that declares the end from the beginning. The God that said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When you go through the fire, I will be with you. When you go through the waters, I will be with you. I will make sure that you don't drown. Jehovah is his name. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. He is still God today. He is still you and I. Our God. And David went. Into the strongholds. When the Philistines were looking for him. Because of the oil. Those who want the oil will not find it. Those who are waiting for your downfall, they will wait forever. Hey, those who are waiting for your drowning, those who are waiting for your sinking, those who are waiting for something evil and terrible to happen to you, they will wait forever. And the Bible says that, and the Apostle Paul, when he had the shipwreck, they came to an island called Malta. And the Bible says that, the place was so cold, it was winter time. And he was feeling so cold, he took bundles of stick and set fire to warm him. All of a sudden, a snake jumped out of the fire and the snake fastened itself on him. And the Bible says that the, 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 the barbarians that live in that island stood there. And they said this, this man is an evil man. This man is a wicked man. That is what they are saying about you. But that is not who you are. That is what they are declaring about you. But that is not your identity. They said this man is an evil and a wicked man. He has escaped the shipwreck. But still judgment is following him. And the Bible says that they stood there waiting for him to fall and die. Because of the venomous beast, the snake, the serpent that has beaten him and fastened itself on him. And the Bible said they stood there and they waited and they waited and they waited and they waited. And they waited. And the Bible says they waited and they waited and they waited and they waited to, for him to fall and die and he was still standing and they said 
this is impossible. He cannot be a man. He is a God. <laughs> Why did they come to that conclusion? Because they knew that snake. Please, you may be seated. They know the snake. They know the power of that snake. And they know that that snake, you don't mess with it. So they expect him to die. But he was still standing. Do you know that you are a mystery to those who are after your oil? You are a mystery. They can't decode you. They can't define you. They cannot predict you and they cannot understand you. Why? Because they know the things they have sent after you to make you drop, but you are still standing. You are still standing. The oil. The oil. Because David was anointed, they pour oil upon his head. Before they pour the oil upon his head, nobody knew David. Nobody cares about David. They call him a shepherd boy. They, they call him good for nothing. They look at him and when they smell him, he smells like sheep. Even his siblings didn't want to identify with him because he was a nobody. But when the oil came upon his head, David had 21 attempts of assassination. 21 attempts of assassination. Donald Trump had what, one or two and we are talking. 21 attempts. 21. Imagine, 21 attempts because of the oil. You know why the devil wants to kill you? The oil. That is why the devil is after your life. The devil wants to finish you at all costs. At all costs. They are hired assassins that have been assigned against your life. Spiritual snipers. Satanic and demonic archers to shoot you with their demonic arrows. Because of the oil. But you are still standing. The oil. The oil. The enemy is not just after your testimony. It's after the oil. Look at somebody and tell the person, the enemy is after my oil. The enemy is after I want you to quickly turn your Bibles to Psalm 45, the verse number 7 and 8. Psalm 45, the verse number 7 and 8. I will read this scripture in different translations. Three different translations. So please give it to me. Psalm 45, the verse number 7 and 8. Watch this. You love righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. And hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. He has anointed you with the oil of gladness. So as you are sitting, there is an oil of gladness upon you. Not only that, the oil that is upon our head, it is not the same. Everyone has a measure of the oil. That is why the Bible says that you, you with the oil of gladness, more than your companion. In other words, the oil that is upon you is much more than your peers and your contemporaries and your colleagues. The oil of gladness. You don't have the oil of sorrow. You don't have the oil of pain. 
You don't have the oil of poverty. You don't have the oil of death. You have the oil of gladness, of joy, of happiness. That is what is on your head. Verse 8. I need us to pray. I need to run through this thing quickly. He said, all your garments are scented with myrrh and alloys and cassia. Now look at me. <laughs> when you are anointed, you don't smell like everybody. <laughs> they can smell you a mile away. They can smell you 10 miles away. Why? Because the oil upon your life is scented. It has fragrance. Why the fragrance? So that wherever you show up, you will stand out. Wherever you show up, they will know this one is anointed. This one is different. This one is chosen. This one is important. This one is precious. This one is valuable. Let me tell you, you smell different from everybody else. You smell different because of the oil. All your garments are scented with men and alloys and cassia because that is what they use for the oil. The anointing oil. To give it fragrance. Out of the ivory palaces. Out of the ivory palaces. Look at me. Your oil, you didn't buy it from dollar store. It's not family dollar. It's not, it's not Walmart. It's not Kroger. It's not Target. The oil came from the palaces. That's what the Bible is saying. Palace. You are not a commoner. Look at somebody and tell the person, I'm not a commoner. Have you ever met a royal before? You meet one every Sunday. Look at this guy here. I'm royal. You may not like me, but I'm royal. You may hate me, but I'm royal. You can say whatever you want to say. I smell royal. I look royal. Everything is royal. Because the oil that is upon my head came from the palace. And he didn't just say palace. He said palaces. Palaces. Why palaces? Because the man was picked from one palace. The best of the best men from one palace. They went to another palace. The alloys was picked from another and then the cassia from another palace. And so the oil that you carry is a combination of royalty and palaces. That is why the enemy is after the oil by which they have made you glad. The oil makes you glad. The devil is after your testimony. The devil is after the oil. Look at somebody and tell the person, but he can't take it. He can't take it. Listen, turn your Bibles quickly with me to Psalm 92, the verse number 10 through 15. Psalm 92, the verse number 10 through 15. And then we will pray. He said, but my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Not old oil, fresh. Not fermented oil, fresh. Not liquidated oil, fresh. I'm anointed with fresh oil. Anointed with fresh oil. When you have fresh oil, you will look fresh. 
The only reason why you are not responding is because you don't have fresh oil. When you have fresh oil, you look fresh. <laughs> you wear ordinary things and they look at it. You look so good. The oil. Look at somebody and tell the person, the oil. The oil. The oil. <laughs> somebody shout the oil. Oh, shout it, the oil. He said, my eyes, my eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. Hey, this man, your eyes, I said your eyes, I said your eyes, I said your eyes. God will not deal with them in private. God will not deal with them secretly. In their secret chambers, God will deal with them openly so that you can see it. My eyes also have seen my desire on my enemies. My ears, my ears, hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. You will not only see, but you will also hear. Those who rise, those who said you will not conceive, you will not have your own baby. Those who said you will not marry. Those who said you will be jobless. Those who said you will not prosper. Those who said you will not make it. Hey, you will hear the judgment of God upon them this month. You will hear the fury of God consuming them. You will see it and you will also hear it. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. He's talking about you. This month you will flourish. You will grow like the cedar of Lebanon. You will bear fruit upwards. And you will be rooted downwards. Let me read. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Are you planted in the house of God? Are you planted in his presence? The Bible says you will flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 40. They shall still bear fruit in old age. Because at your old age, you are naturally expected not to bear fruit, but even at your old age, you will still be bearing fruit. You will still be bearing fruit. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Fresh and flourishing. The verse 15, the last verse. To declare that the Lord is upright. Why? The verse 15. God will do all these things for you and I to show his uprightness. To show that he is the God of justice. He is a righteous king. He deals with those who rise up against you first and he makes you see it and hear it to know that of a surety and of a certainty, he has taken care of them. And then after he has done that, he makes you begin to bear fruit and flourish and expand and enlarge and he blesses you and prospers. To declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Rise on your feet.
this afternoon, I have just some few minutes. I have to work on all these things under five minutes so that we can live here on time. But this afternoon, I want you to go after them that rise against your testimony and oil. And tell the Lord, God, let me see your judgment upon them. Let me see my desires upon them. Do it. And do it quickly and speedily. This month. Let it be expeditious. Let them know that you are a just and a righteous God and you are the God over my life and over my destiny. And it is you that gives me the testimony and it is you that have anointed me. Let them that rise up against me, let them crash by fire. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Rica Sekori, Reco Sakaria, Okoro, Katakari, Rakadia, Okoro, Rekari, Okoro, Rahade, Soko, Kari, Rako, Sakari, Rako, Takari, Sokori, Rako, Sokori, Rakatakari, Sokori, Rako, Sokori, Rakade, Rako, Sakari, Reco Sekori, Rakatakari, Amen. Media department, make the declaration ready for me. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 92, the verse number 9. Psalm 92, the verse number 9. Psalm 92, the verse number 9. Project it for me. Now, I want everybody to look on the monitors and I want you to read it together at the count of two. At the count of two. Look on the monitors. Everybody read it together at the count of two. One, two, go. For behold, your enemies, O oh Lord. Lord. For, For behold, your, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. You don't understand. We will read it again. We will declare it again. Psalm 92, the verse number 9. Ready? Go! For, for behold, your enemies, O oh Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. 
I want you to clap your hands and begin You are going to make this declaration after me. Look on the monitors. Look on the monitors. Project it. You will make these declarations after me. Look on the monitors. I want you to take a stand. You see the way I'm standing? We are in the battlefield. Take a stand. Lift up your right hand. Make these declarations after me. The forces of darkness. The forces of darkness. Working against my testimonies. Working against my testimony. Let them catch fire. Let them catch fire. Satanic powers. Satanic powers. Trying to overturn. Trying to overturn. My testimonies. My testimonies. Let them fail. Let, Let them fail. In their quest. In their quest. God. God. Rise. Rise. And fight. And, and fight. For me. For me. The testimony. The testimony. Of my finances. Of my finances. Job. Job. Relationship. Relationship. Marriage. Marriage. Health. Health. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Restoration. Restoration. Vindication. Vindication. Business. Business. Household. Household. Children. Children. Promotion. Promotion. Open door. Open door. I declare. I declare. It will. It will not. Not be. Be abortive. Abortive. It will not. It will not be abortive. Be abortive. My testimony. My testimony will. Manifest, will manifest in every area in every area of my life of my life this week this week this month this month unstoppable unstoppable in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus clap your hands and begin to pray rebakasokoria rekozekeri rabakatakare rekozokoro rebakasakari rebakasakaria isokoria rebakatekori rabakasoke Take a stand. Make this declaration after me. Look on the monitors and make this declaration after me. Lift up your right hand. Let the rain of my testimonies. Let the rain of my testimonies fall on me now. Fall on me now. Give me. Give me change of story. Change of story. For your glory. For your glory. Favor. 
favor, blessings, blessings, celebration, celebration, laughter, laughter, rest, rest from all battles, from all battles, battles will be, will be my portion, my, my portion, portion this month, this month, this month, this month, I will, I will have, have. Testimonies, testimonies, and breakthrough, and breakthrough everywhere, everywhere. This man, this man, where they say, where they say, no, no, they will say, they will say, yes, yes. Monetary spirit, monetary spirit. I shut you down. I, I shut you down. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Zakaria, Rabakatoko, Rabakashekori, Rabakashekori. Open your mouth. Zakaria, Rabakashekori, Rokosokori, Rabakashaba, Zakaria, Rabakashekori, Rokosokori, Rekasokoro, Rabakash. Sakari, Roko Sakari, Kokoria, Rakadia, Kokoro, Rakatakori, Rakoke, Rakadia, Kokoro, Rakadeke, Roko Sokori, Rakasaka, Rakatoko, Rokosia, Kokoro, Rakadia, Sakari, Kokoro, Rakade, Sakaro, Rakadi, Kokoro, Rakade, Kokori, Sake, Kokoro, Sakari, Kokore, Kokori, Rakadi, Kokori, Kokori, Rakodi, Kokori, Rakade, Kokoro, Rakade, Kokori. Hallelujah. Make this declaration after me. Lift up your right hand. Look on the monitors. Make this declaration after me. I will sing a new song this month. I, I will sing a new song this month. Oh, say it with some conviction. I will sing a new song this month. I will, I will sing, sing a new song this month. The prophecy over my life. The, the prophecy, prophecy over, over my, my life. life. Career. 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 Business, business, finances, finances, ministry, ministry, healing, healing, deliverance, deliverance shall come to pass, shall come to pass unfailingly, unfailingly in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and Turn your Bibles to First Samuel chapter two, the verse number one. First Samuel two, the verse number one. First Samuel chapter two, the verse number one. You can write it down, but you can look on the monitors. First Samuel two, the verse number one. He said, and Hannah prayed. Somebody say Hannah prayed. Hannah prayed. Somebody say Hannah prayed. Hannah prayed. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. Amen. Listen to me. This month and the rest of the year, yes. your heart Amen. will rejoice yes. in the Lord. Amen. I said, Your heart yes. will rejoice yes. in the Lord. In the Lord. And Hannah said, My heart has rejoiced in the Lord. And he said, My horn is exalted 
in the Lord. Amen. Your horn will be exalted this week. Will be exalted this month. Amen. Will be exalted the rest of the year. Yes. If you believe it, shout, I receive it. I receive it. watch this I smile at my enemies I smile at my enemies oh say it with me I smile smile at my enemies at my enemies I smile I smile at my enemies and she said the reason why she because I rejoice in your salvation. Amen. Because I rejoice in your salvation. Do you know why she smiles at the enemy? Because the enemy cannot do anything to her. Yes. They cannot suppress her. They cannot oppress her. They cannot take away her testimony. They cannot take away her oil. They cannot take away her manifestation. Amen. Because God is our salvation. Amen. He is our deliverance. He is our in and all. This month, let that be your testimony. Amen. I receive let it. Let that be your story. Amen. I receive it. Let that be your song. I receive it. Let that be your breakthrough. Amen. Lift up your hands and just thank God. Open your mouth and just thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, open your mouth and thank you, Lord, for the wonders. Thank you, Jesus. For the miracles. Thank you, Jesus. For the breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. For the wonders. Thank you, Jesus. 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 For the testimony in the in your marriage, in your relationship, in your finances, in your breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and just thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God is able to do. Just what he said. Oh, lift up your hands unto heaven. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, somebody celebrate! Oh, give the Lord a shout in this place. God is able to do just what He said. Just what He said. He's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill every promise. Every promise to Don't give up on God. Cause He was.
well. It's time for tithe and offering. It's time for tithe and offering. If you have your tithe, please, you can come forward. If you need an, off, uh, an envelope for your tithe, you can lift up your hands. Protocol will locate you and give you an envelope for your tithe and your offering. You can also give digitally through the mediums that you see on your screen. And uh, all our online members, you can give your tithe, you can give your offering through the mediums you see on your screen. If you have your tithe in the sanctuary, please kindly come forward with your tithe. Lift it up unto the Lord. Heavenly Father, you that hear prayers and you that answer at prayer, Behold, they are honoring you with their substance. They are honoring you with what you gave them. And to declare to you that whatever they own and possess belongs to you. Bless them. Cause them to excel. Let them not lack. Expand and enlarge their coast and they are tentacles in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, if you are writing a check, please make it payable to Prayer City or Eagles Chapel. Prayer City or Eagles Chapel. If you need an offering envelope, you can just lift up your hands. Protocol will locate you and give you an offering envelope. Hallelujah. I want you to bow your head and pray over your offering. I want you to bow your head and pray over your offering. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. As your people give, let this week be a week of prosperity, a week of testimonies, a week of blessings, and a week of breakthroughs. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise on your feet. Today we are taking the Lord's, we are coming to the Lord's table and we are taking communion. Uh, for me to work with the time, as we take the offering, we will take the communion at the same time. Is it okay? Okay. So as we take the offering, we'll be taking the communion. I want you to close your eyes wherever you are falling short of the glory of God. Wherever you are falling short of the glory of God. Ask God for forgiveness. The communion is supposed to be a blessing and not a curse. Father, I command the bread to become the body of Jesus. I command the grape juice to become the blood of Jesus. As we take this communion, let sickness and diseases disappear. Let there be deliverance. Let there be wholeness, absolute healing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Let's take the offering. Choir. God of vengeance God of vengeance God of vengeance Judge of my enemies Those that say they cannot live to see me That's 
together. If you can't open it, the person that is beside you can help you open it. Father, I declare that as we have taken the communion, our deliverance, our healing, our breakthrough, our wholeness is settled in the name of Jesus by the therapeutic powers of the communion, I declare that our weakness has been changed, exchanged for his strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a clap offering and you may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So the coming week is the Level Up Conference. Somebody say Level Up. Somebody say Level Up. So the coming weekend is the Level Up Conference. They will be giving the announcement. Uh, Gifty will be giving the announcement shortly. But I want you to know that this is an important conference for the youth and the young adults to be part of it. I am telling you, it is going to be a time of supernatural, divine encounter. That is why all parents present today, you must let your children come to this conference. I will be ministering. There are other great ministers also that will be speaking in different, different age groups. I'm telling you, it is going to be a time of impartation, a time of transformation, a time of elevation for our children and the young adults and the youth and the Jay-Z's. Don't miss it. It's this weekend. It's this weekend. Everybody is invited. There are different churches that will be joining us here. Different, different churches. They are youth that will be joining us. So if you are part of this ministry and you don't show up, it is a shame. It is even a reproach. Don't miss it. And please, if you want to be part of the... to take selfies, red carpet, photo booth, you have to be here at 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. For the red carpet. Friday. For the red carpet. For the photo booth. For selfies. It's going to be awesome. 
8.30. By 8 p.m., we will be in the, in the sanctuary for the teaching, for the celebration, and for everything, the concert that will be taking place here. Different artists are coming. Don't miss it for anything. I urge you, encourage each and every one of you to be here with your children and talk to your, uh, uh, your co-workers. Let them bring their children, your neighbors. Let them bring their children. There will be item 13 also. Drink, food, galore. There will be cocktail also. When you come at that time, 6.30, there will be cocktail so you can, you can chill. You can enjoy yourself. Amen. So don't miss it for any cause, for any reason. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's welcome Gifty to give us the announcement. God richly bless you. Thank you, Papa. In addition to the Youth and Young Adults Conference, it's going to be a fun time. So please, please, please let all children from the ages of 13 and then young adults up to age of 30, please show up. Even if they don't want to, parents, convince them, persuade them. It's going to be an exciting time in the house of the Lord. They are doing a lot of things I'm not allowed to tell, like I will tell. But they are doing exciting things. See this as an extended version of Shabak. So don't let them miss it because we want them to experience this time in the presence of the Lord. Please take note of the dates and the times for the activity. So Friday, October 11th at 7 p.m. is the Ignite Worship. And as Papa said, 6.30 is the photo booth session. Saturday October 12th, 9.30 a.m. is the main conference. Please let them be here on time so that we can do a lot of activities during the day. And then Sunday is a Thanksgiving service and it's at 10 a.m. So please take note of the times. And we are all invited, so let's come and support them as well. The next event after that is on... 25th October at 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. And that is for the all night. No one will say, where is your God all night? The theme is, I will arise. And just as we did before, let us come in our numbers and fire in the house of the Lord and pray over the month and over our lives and our families. And then in November, please take note and mark your calendar, is the 5030 Encounter Conference. The theme is the faithfulness of God. The date is 14th to 17th November at 7 p.m. each night. On 17th, which is Sunday, we'll have two services, the normal service um, at 9 a.m. and then we'll come back at 7 p.m for the evening session. We have amazing speakers on board. Please show up in your numbers like you always do. Let us fellowship together and experience another powerful time in the presence of God. Please be reminded that we have three services over the course of the week. The usual Sunday service is from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And as you know, our children and youth ministry is active, so please bring your kids along when you're coming to church. And then on Tuesday, we have the midweek service, also the Bible study, which is from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. You don't also want to miss that. We are learning a lot 